It's time now for our rants and raves, starting with Dan Kennedy. Uh, I have a rant for the continued decline of uh, local journalism in the United States. I hadn't and I hadn't noticed. <laughs> and, but my specific rant is that uh, STAT uh, reported this week, Helen Bradswell reported, that epidemiologists are having a very hard time uh, tracking the spread of infectious disease because there were so few local newspapers compared to uh, the way it was before. Uh, Stat said, local newspapers are critical to identifying outbreaks and forecasting their trajectories. So uh, it, there are health implications to the, to the decline of local newspapers mm. as well. All right, Dan. Well, I have a rave and a rant. It's a, <laughs> it's oh, no. a, 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 a tiny little rave for the interview with uh, Laurie Siegel of CNN, who I, I did not know who she was, but she had this interview with Mark Zuckerberg. I thought it was it was interesting in that he doesn't do a lot of these interviews. He was uh, he was forthcoming, I think, um, apologizing for some of the mistakes that they've made in the past. So I thought from that standpoint it was good. But I felt that the tone of the entire, and this is where I'm ranting um, uh, against this, is that it felt as if it was a video news release. Mm -hmm. The way that it was conducted, the reporter was reading a lot of the questions at one point, uh, Zuckerberg, uh, you know, in responding to whether or not there should be regulation over uh, Facebook, said, oh, well, the question that you should be asking oh. is, and then she then asked that question, yeah. where she should have pushed back and said, well, we'll get Maybe into he that. But, her. Right, and, and so that yeah. made me feel a little uncomfortable in the way it was handled, so um, that's why it gets around. I wonder why. It, I mean, she, she was not exactly one of their biggest. Names. No, and I, yeah. I don't know how that all. He might have picked it. He Maybe. might have said. Yeah. All right, Callie. So I have a rave. Um, sadly, the, uh, for the, uh, Les Payne, who died um, just a few days ago, he had a heart attack. He was one of the co-founders of the National Association of Black Journalists, but most importantly, his his career as a journalist was just stellar. He was four decades, almost four decades, at Newsday, where he rose from reporting to being an uh, associate managing editor. Um, got a Pulitzer for leading the team, doing heroin coverage well before we were talking about it. Um, and he had so many other influences among not just uh, journalists like myself that came behind him, but um, just so many across the board. There was no question about who he was, the strength of his journalism, the power of it, and um, we will miss him so much, both what he gave to journalism and what he certainly offered as a role model to African-American journalists like myself. All right. Carly. Uh, I have a rave for uh, my former colleague, uh, Chris Ferrone, and his uh, hyperlocal journal journalism incubator called the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism. Um, their latest project is a standalone newspaper issue, so a one-issue uh, series on, uh, called Pilgrims. It's an oral history of 50 years of the anti-nuclear movement wow. on the Cape. Um, a couple things about this. It, I think as, as news organizations get smaller and we see less local journalism, we, we miss uh, the, the niche journalism, and in and, and particular, going deep on, on some of these niche topics. This is a fantastic piece. Uh, one author, 30,000 words. Um, in addition to it being online, he's published about 5,000 copies of this, so you can find it in a library. It'll live on uh, for, uh, for in print for some time. That's a good one. Mm. Well, well, finally tonight, I have a rant, actually, for CNN's Anderson Cooper. And I loved the interview he did last night with Karen McDougal. I'm looking forward to the interview that he's going to be doing with Stormy Daniels. But he didn't disclose that he has a conflict of interest. He should have said, I also work for CBS News, and I know what Stormy Daniels said. He could, he could, he could, have, he could have said to Karen last night, oh, by the way, Stormy says this, and that's not what Stormy told me, but he can't because he's bound be, because he has another contract with an, an, and so it's a conflict and he should have addressed it that's my only rant there he's a great reporter you know the interview was terrific i was riveted to it i will be watching stormy daniels but he needed to disclose that. Mm -hmm. All right. Finally, tonight it's not every day that one of our long time it's never as a matter of fact yeah. one of our long time panelists has a new book out i have it right here it is called the return of the moguls and it is by dan hold Kennedy. it right up to yeah. the camera there, there right it is there. it's already up there <laughs> So just give us a quick overview. What's this about? Well, uh, what I did was I tracked the progress of three wealthy newspaper owners, uh, Jeff Bezos at the Washington Post, 
uh, John Henry at the Boston Globe, and although he's kind of faded from the scene, uh, he's no longer an owner, uh, Aaron Kushner of the Orange County Register. Uh, I looked at it with an eye toward uh, what might they discover that the rest of the struggling newspaper business uh, might be able to learn something from. Um, and, you know, it's hard. Aaron Kushner failed. John Henry is struggling along. Jeff Bezos has had uh, more success. Uh, but it's, it's been an interesting thing to watch, especially since all three of them uh, came along at a point when, when we were beginning to realize that free journalism online doesn't work. And so their struggle has been to try to figure out ways to re-engage readers and get them to start paying for the journalism that they the, consume. Did um, all these big moguls talk to you? Uh, all of them except Jeff Bezos, and he doesn't talk to anybody, even <laughs> the Washington Post. Is that right? Yes. All right. Well, good luck with it, Dan. Thank you. We'll all be reading it.